morning, church. What a beautiful day out there. I hope everyone's got their air conditioners tuned up because that summer heat's a coming. And we all know what that means. Those tomatoes that have been sitting there not moving an inch are finally going to start growing, right? So uh, we welcome that warmth. Uh, I know my kids are looking forward to jumping in the water uh, now that it's finally warming up. And uh, uh, well, anyway, welcome as we worship together on this beautiful, beautiful day that God has made for us. Uh, uh, we worship today celebrating Holy Trinity Sunday. A uh, very special welcome to all visitors and guests. Uh, also, we're very, very glad that you're here. And if you are a visitor or guest, uh, we really want to get to know you more. So uh, after worship, I invite you to head down to the Fellowship Hall, uh, into the entryway where we have some coffee and some goodies, and we'd love to hear more about your story. Uh, we also welcome all who are joining us uh, in worship this morning through all of our virtual broadcasts. Uh, Al and Diane, good morning. And uh, to everybody else, uh, we know that you are still joining us through these means, and we thank you for worshiping with us again this morning. Uh, and a special thanks to Jim Bottrell for sponsoring our broadcast and the flowers in the chancel this morning in loving memory of his wife, Louise. Hope continues to host a new opportunity for those who are grieving the loss of a spouse or partner. This grief discussion group continues this Thursday evening from 5.30 to 7 p.m. There's more information available in the bulletin on that opportunity. Next week, we plan to worship outdoors as the weather allows with Hope's house band. So we invite you to grab a lawn chair or two, your sunglasses, an umbrella in case the sun is especially bright, and join us out on the blacktop for worship. Uh, just a quick note in our order of worship this morning, our closing hymn for the fruit of all creation uh, is mislisted in our bulletin. We're actually singing uh, from With One Voice, number 760. So if you like to open that hymnal and sing along uh, to, the, to the music, uh, open With One Voice, the blue hymnal, uh, to number 760 for, for the fruit of all creation. Uh, there are a lot of other opportunities to engage our uh, life together here at Hope, and you can check out the bulletin for other announcements and opportunities to do that. Our worship this morning continues with confession. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. We gather as we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Gracious God, we are the all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We have collectively and individually, knowingly and unknowingly, sinned against you and our neighbor. Forgive us, we pray. Our faithful and just God promises to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of Christ, your sins are forgiven. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now here's the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people. Almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
I can't look at this next piece of scripture without hearing the melody in my head. This is Psalm 8. And if you've sung in a choir all of your life, what you hear is, O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. But we're going to say it this morning responsibly. <laughs> oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? You have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You've made them rule over the works of your hands. You put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our New Testament lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Romans today, and you'll recognize this too from the fifth chapter. Like a lot of Paul's writing, there's a lot of meat in these few verses. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Our gospel for today is recorded by St. John in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said to you that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. I want to begin by thanking Pastor Matt for giving me the chance to explain once and for all the doctrine of the Trinity. <laughs> the Trinity. Uh, it is a mystery. Amen. <laughs> but I see I have a, a little more time, so perhaps I can uh, share a story. We'll call her Mary, not because that was her name, but because that's one of the names we pastors like to use for our puppet stories. At any rate, Mary was born a beloved child, 
For many years, her parents thought they were destined to be childless, and then along came Mary. After a few weeks, the family gathered at the little country church whose cemetery held various generations and members of Mary's family. And a nervous young pastor with a bit of a lisp pronounced, Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The pastor prayed for Mary to receive the Holy Spirit. The congregation sang a hymn, and they all went home. As she got older, Mary's mother took her to Sunday school, and the family sat together in church most Sundays. Mary learned to sing Jesus Loves Me and to sit mostly quietly for an hour even when she had no idea what the pastor was talking about and she was bored out of her mind. She did mostly like the time before and after church, though, when people would visit and they'd catch up on one another's lives and uh, they would ask her about her schooling and how things were going, like they were really interested in her life. And one day, when she was maybe fifth or sixth grade, she happened to be tuned in a little bit more than usual to the sermon, and she came home with a question. Mom, what's the Trinity? How does that work? Well, her mother had spent her whole life in church, so she barely hesitated when she answered, ask Pastor McWaters next week. <laughs> He'll tell you. Well, life moved on at a breakneck pace, or so it seemed, looking back. Mary went to college, drifted away from church, uh, mostly except for her wedding. She began a successful career as a biology teacher at the local junior college. When their first child was born, Mary and her husband found a congregation where they felt welcomed. And one day, the congregation gathered around the baptismal font as their baby squalled all the way through, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Actually, I should back up a, a little bit here. See, by, it was by this time that Mary had made her peace between her faith and her scientific education and training which for Mary was no small feat. Because it seemed as she progressed in her studies that there was very little room for God, at least the God that she'd learned about so many years ago in her little congregation. The mysteries of life became chemical equations and explainable processes. But there was this nagging feeling that something was missing. The scientific certainties weren't quite as certain as they pretended to be. And so she began to delve deeper into science and physics and all sorts of different studies until she found places where she could point to God's creative activity around her or at least where God's intervention made sense to her. As the years went by, she taught her daughter and then her son to sing, Jesus Loves Me, how to sit still, mostly, even when they were bored and had absolutely no idea what the preacher was talking about. When her husband died, the prayers of the congregation, the hugs, the tears, and most especially the ones who came and just sat quietly with her on the really bad days. All those helped carry her through the rawest of her grief. And then the lump appeared. She sat calmly as the doctor gave her the diagnosis, the options, the referrals. But that night all her thoughts melted into one question. Is God for me in this or against me? Or maybe worst of all, indifferent? 
Now, there was nothing in all the study that she had done reconciling her faith with her scientific background that answered that question, at least not in a way that gave her much comfort. She began to feel like that songwriter of long ago who looked up into the night sky over Jerusalem and wondered, what are more mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? And she couldn't come up with a good answer. Her days, though, became filled with doctor appointments and rounds of treatments that often left her too weak to drive, so her friends and neighbors became her drivers and companions as the weeks wore on. And it was only in the stillness of the night when she wasn't too exhausted that that question would come back to haunt her. Sometimes God seems so close, and other times so very far away. And always the answer seemed just out of reach. On one of the last Sundays that she was able to make it to church, the reader stood up and began, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, to which Mary thought, Yeah. I must be loaded with character by now. But it was the last verse that caught her that day. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And she went home, and during the week she reread that verse, and she continued on then reading for a few more verses. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now the next Sunday, Mary was too ill to go out, but her daughter had come home for the weekend, so they sat and looked through the old family picture albums. And there was one of Mary's daughter, age six, in her little dress and with a matching ribbon, standing in front of the church with seven other children about her age. Mom, remember how you worked so hard to help me learn that song that we sang that day? Jesus loves me, this I know. You know, the funny thing is that Mary had once asked for an explanation of the Trinity, an explanation, by the way, that she never really got, even from Pastor McWaters. But she spent her whole life experiencing the triune love of God and barely even recognized it. And the second question that kept her up at night, she began her treatments, Well, her daughter knew the answer to that question. She learned it from her mother. Now, if you want to try and understand the doctrine of the Trinity and all that it says about God and our relationship with God, well, bone up on your Latin, your Greek, page two of the last 2,500 years or so of Western philosophy and theology and have at it. And once you're hopelessly befuddled, perhaps you'll remember that little song you learned so many years ago. It contains everything you need to know, everything you can know. Amen.
We confess our faith this morning in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which we might think of as the Trinity for dummies or laity, but this is what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. One God, giver of life, you breathed breath into the world and provided in abundance to sustain all things. Enliven your church to advocate for and steward all that has been entrusted to us, including aquifers, forests, and the soil of the ground. Help us see the gift our neighbors are to us as well, that we might work collectively for the common good. We sing to the Lord. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us heart, send us praise. Loving God, you delight in the human race. Move more than the hearts of community and world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Build up ministries that support the isolated and lonely and stir us toward mutuality and relationships that cross the invisible boundaries we draw around ourselves. We sing to the Lord. Abiding God, you have made your home among us. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or illness this day, including Harriet Jones, Floyd Anderson, Ken Melby, John Johnson, Joanne Anderson, Al Moss, Greg, Rick, Bob, Shar, Kristen, Daryl, and all we lift to you in our prayers. And we remember the saints who have gone before us along with their families who are left amidst their grief, including Dodie Wilhouse and her family as they grieved the death of her husband, Rich Wilhouse. And the families mourned this weekend through funerals here at Hope including the families of Judy Kaiser and Kay Johnson. We sing to the Lord. Lord, listen.
Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. We share signs of God's peace with one another. I'm going to invite the congregation to be seated for the great thanksgiving. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit is worshiped and glorified, one God, holy and eternal. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now gathered together in Christ's love, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at Hope Lutheran Church, we practice open communion, which means all have a seat at Christ's table of mercy and grace. We'll commune this morning uh, in two ways. For those of you who grabbed the communion kits, I will do my best not to forget uh, this morning. Following the instructions here, I will offer the words, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given and shed for you, at which time I invite you to open those kits and commune where you are. We'll also commune at two stations in the front in a continuous manner. Gluten-free wafers and grape juice are available for those who have that need. Uh, please just let no, your server know uh, that that's what you request. The banquet is prepared. All is ready. Come, eat and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please rise in body or spirit. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn for the fruit of all creation. For the fruit of all And now, people of God, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And God goes with us, and this changes everything.